Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Now it's time for your weekend tech tip, brought to you by Chevy Silverado. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you very much. We have Jim McNair from Kershaw just giving you a few ideas on how to sharpen your knives, and there's a number of different ways to do it. Filet knives are the ones that we use the most. They are the ones that we dole out the fastest, typically. Uh, you can use any one of these that we showed you uh, for sharpening a filet knife. Again, it falls down to what you're comfortable with. And to be very honest with you, with the metal that's being used on these particular knives, which, by the way, yeah. This is one of the reasons why I really did fall in love with these, is the flex that they actually have in them. Uh, this is the one that I use the most, Jim. Uh, then, of course, that one right there. I haven't been catching very big fish, unfortunately, <laughs> so the smaller <laughs> size blade has been fine, uh, but certainly the longer version, which I believe is the 9-inch version. Correct. Yeah. Uh, the flex that it has is all throughout the blade. It just doesn't bend down here at the bottom. And, and all of you know what I'm referring to. When you get a fillet knife and it bends here and then straightens out, it just doesn't give you um, really a good edge when you're trying to run along that backbone. And you can see here, it bends very evenly from tip to handle. Uh, which is, is important, at least in my mind. So a number of ways to do that. I would say the most popular way is just to draw uh, through the little V-guy, whatever you call it, because it's simple and fast. Myself, yeah. what I carry around, and I don't even know what it's called, uh, is the one that you kind of, you see the chefs use a lot. If yep. you get a good one, uh, you can get pretty good with that pretty quickly. But maintenance is a thing that I know a lot of us overlook. I know that I do, uh, especially if I use a knife a lot, there could be anything in there. It could yeah. be scales, blood, wood, dirt, mud, sand, I mean, all of it, right? Uh, yeah. What's some of the things that we could use to be better uh, at maintaining our pocket knives in particular and uh, overall any of them? Yeah, well, most knife maintenance is pretty simple. The stuff that the average person is gonna do will be either they've got a loose blade, mm -hmm. maybe they have a loose or a bent pocket clip, mm -hmm. or they just need a little lubrication. Okay. So a lot like a car in that regard. Okay, makes sense. Um, so, I mean, if we take like this knife in my pocket, is our ZT545, one of our newer ones. And that's ones. relatively a new one, right? This Let's is, keep, yeah. Keep it right in here so yeah. we can, yeah. there you go. So this is our, this is one of our newer ones. Uh, if you look at that, or even if you look at, this is our 6105 Bel Air, another really brand new one for us. I love the locking mechanism on that. These are different mechanisms, and I'm glad you pointed it out. Yeah. Different mechanisms, very similar maintenance. Okay. So if you look at these, these big pivot screws, mm -hmm. these will work with a T8 Torx wrench. That's T-O-R-X. And that would also be, you get that on, online or whatever, yep. but get a good one. Don't get something yep. that's just gonna twist out. Yeah, we use these Weha one brand ones in the factory and they're great. They're like six bucks, seven bucks on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Get a T6 and a T8 and you're pretty much set. You're pretty much good to go, all yep. right? So and, these, that, and that would also go with the out the fronts. That's correct. Uh, which is obviously, you know, these are very high end. The, the American made knives are, are, are not always, but are typically going to be a little bit spinnier uh, because yeah. you're getting higher quality uh, material and, of course, difficulty of knife to manufacture. Yeah. Um, this particular one being an out the front, uh, you've got a lot of screws here. Now, this yeah. is an extremely popular style of knife here in Oregon, yeah. in Washington. You look for your legal regulations and this and that. Um, but these are actually pretty simple to maintain. You mentioned that you can take them apart if yep. they get dirty on the inside. So you Absolutely. don't have to be too intimidated by one of Kershaw's out the front knife as opposed nope. to maybe some of the others that I've had experience with. That if you take it apart, it goes ping! Yep. And then you're looking for screws and stuff. Yeah. So which real, is no fun. So real briefly, sure. if you have a loose pivot and your blade's wobbly, mm -hmm. you take your T8 Torx, your bigger one, and you tighten that up a little bit. And it's just a little bit of playing with it. You know, if you get so tight the knife doesn't open, back mm -hmm. it off a little bit. Sure. You know, people get intimidated, but it's really, there's really not that much to it. The other big thing can be if your pocket clip gets bent or if it, if it just gets loose and wiggles, Sure. you take your T6 Torx, and that works on all the handle screws and also on the pocket clip screws. So gotcha. If you look at something like that, you've got these two little screws here that you can tighten. So really, that will do the majority of your knife. And then, same thing on the out the fronts. You know, you have, these, you have these five handle screws. They're also T6. Same with these two on the back end here. These are T6 as well that hold that clip on. So if it gets loose or it gets broken. So the other big thing that we need to do is we need to lubricate our knives. So just a little small amount of lube goes a long way. I prefer this little needle dropper. This one's a Tough Glide brand, but there's lots of other options. We make a Kershaw oil that we sell, but these are really handy to just get that tiny amount of oil. So with most folders, you just close it up and you put a little drop on either side and that will go right on the other one and you kind of work that in and that's most of what it needs. 
So they're not as high maintenance as you might, at, at least maybe the, the, that you could assume that they are. They're relatively simple. It's yeah. more or less just actually take the time and do it. Yeah, they're right? pretty, but not high maintenance. Jim, thank you as always. I'm going to make him stay with me as we finish the show. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a minute. That's how quickly 21 minutes goes by, my friend. We'll be, it's crazy. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry.